Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the step and the smooth step functions. The smooth step is based on the, uh, the step function. These functions are written for us. They're part of the OpenGL um, API. And then towards the, uh, the end of this video, we're going to take a look at, very briefly, uh, shaping. We're going to get an intro into shaping functions with an example. Now we're going to take a look at, in this video, how step and smooth step, or specifically smooth step, is being used to draw this line on the left. So let's first get into step. What is this step function? Well, the step function is a function that returns a 0 or a 1. That's all. A binary choice. It has two arguments, an edge. Just say this way. An edge case and a test case. We set an edge. If the test case is below the edge, we get a 0 back. If the test case is equal to or greater than the edge case, we get a 1 back. So let's just say we have a 0 0.5 for our edge. And we're going to use the, uh, the x axes as the tester. So this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and we're going to use the x-coordinate, which is this guy on the left here. ST gives us the x, y, and z coordinate of the current pixel running the shader. So we're testing the x-coordinate of the current pixel running the shader. Now any x of our pixel that falls underneath 0 0.5, step returns a 0. Any x of our pixel that is equal to or greater than 0 0.5, it gives us a 1. So that's all step does. It gives you a 0 and 1 based on an edge case. And conveniently, the 0 and 1 line up with the uh, 0 and 1 range for our RGB values. Let's move on to a smooth step. What is smooth step? Smooth step does what step does, but uh, one, one step greater. So smooth step, smooth step takes three arguments. It takes two edge cases. So one edge case, the first edge case, the second edge case, and then the test. And what smooth step does is it says, let's say our first edge is 0 0.2, our second edge is 0 0.8. Anything below the first edge, I'll give you a zero. Anything above the first or the second edge, I'll give you a one. Now anything in between, I'll give you interpolated values. All interpolated values are is from 0 to 1 in very predictable, um, identical increments. So whatever those increments are, just each increment is, is identical to the, to the last. And it goes from 0 to 1 in the smoothing uh, pattern of numbers. So it could be like 0 0.05, and then 0 0.10, and then 0 0.15, and 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 0.30. So you're going up by uh, 0 0.05s. So what the actual increments are, I you'd have to calculate that. But just, uh, just understand that it's a smoothing arrangement of, or pattern of numbers. And so how's smooth step creating this line on the left here? Well, smooth step, this plot, is using smooth step. And it's taking the difference of two smooth steps. So it's one smooth step. It has one canvas. It's subtracting a different canvas. And it's giving to us a, the difference between the two. So let's see if we can uh, break that down, what that looks like visually. If you wanted to know what it looks like mathematically, we'd have to go into like, not every single uh, pixel, but let's just do it visually. So it's taking one smooth step, subtracting another smooth step, and it's giving us the difference between the two. Now, for the, uh, the first smooth step, the PCT, so the plot takes two arguments. It takes the coordinate of the pixel running the shader, and it takes an edge case, this PCT. And that edge case is the same or these canvases, these two smooth steps. So whatever that edge case is, it doesn't matter. 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.285, doesn't matter. Just an edge case that both of these uh, smooth steps share. So let's tackle this first canvas, this first smooth step. What canvas is it uh, producing? Well, it's saying the first edge case for a smooth step is PCT minus 0 0.05. So anything under PCT minus 0 0.05, I'll give you a zero. The second edge case is PCT itself. Anything above PCT, I'll give you a 1. And then in between, what do we do? We interpolate the values. And so for the sake of this little example, let's just refer to uh, interpolated values as something. So anything under PCT minus 0 0.05, I'll give you a 0. Anything above PCT, I'll give you a 1. And in between, just something. Now the second smooth step says, anything under PCT itself, I'll give you a 0. Anything above PCT plus 0 
I'll give you a one and in between something. Now the plot function takes the difference between these guys and gives us a third canvas. All of these guys here are one. All of these guys here are one. So this one minus this one over here gives us on the, the final canvas. Uh, let's draw that a bit better. On the final canvas, it gives us a zero. So one, mi one minus one is zero. Now this is still one right here on the left. So that one minus, what is this? This is something. So one minus something is something. Because that something's not one, definitely not one, because if it was one, it'd be zero. And it's not zero, because if it was zero, it'd be one. So one minus something is something. Now what those values are specifically, we could get into that. But for the sake of this video, we don't need to. So we get something. One minus something is something. Now we have something here on the left, something minus, and all these guys are zero. What is something minus zero? Well, something minus zero is still that something. So we get something here. And then finally, we get zero minus zero is equal to zero. And so our final canvas looks like zero on the top, zero on the bottom, and something in between. And that's how we're able to achieve this line on the left here in that picture. Right here, zero on the top, zero on the bottom, and then something in between, these interpolated values. Now, why is this line going from the bottom left to the top right? When we did our example here, the line was horizontal. Well, let's look at a site here. The site is called desmos.com, and it is an online graphing calculator. If you notice, we have the same effect. We have the bottom left to the top right. This function on the left is what we call a linear function. It's called linear because the uh, the x coordinates are equal to the y coordinates. The slope of this line is linear. It's constant. It's the same. And so this line on the uh, on our GSL here, our, our canvas here, is being modeled or it's being shaped. Where is that? It's being shaped by a function. This is one of the ways we can use a shaping or a function to shape geometry on screen. In another video we're going to see how we use uh, functions to shape color on screen. So let's do this before we end the video. So this is a, a function and we use this function to shape this line. By default it would be this horizontal line but we used it, uh, the linear function, to, do, to uh, shape that line. What if we used a sinusoidal or an oscillating function? What if we use this function here, f of x is equal to sine of x, to shape our horizontal line, we should get this wave, let me zoom out on this so you can see it, we should get this so a wave effect. So let's see if we can reproduce the wave effect, the wave line in our OpenGL. And so this line right here, this line 16, this is how our uh, geometry, our color, our, our canvas is getting shaped. So let's change that to sine of x. So sine of x. So just we're, so we're clear, this float y is equal to st dot x. It's, it's sine right now, but it was st dot x. That float y, let's go float here. That float y is equal to st dot x. It's exactly the same as f of x is equal to x. These two are equivalent, and y and f of x are equivalent. So this is how our canvas is getting its shape. This is the shaping function right here. Now notice we have this uh, this curve. Our curve went from our line went from bottom left to top right. Now it's bottom left to like just below the uh, the top right. What's going on here? Well, if you haven't seen my video on normalizing, go watch them. What's happening is the boundaries of our dimension on our canvas is zero to one. And so when we restrict the boundaries visually from zero to one on this uh, Desmos graphing calculator, we see the same effect. We see bottom left to just under top right. What we want to do is we want to speed up the values. We're going to shift the dimensions, the boundaries of our dimension, so we can see more of the uh, more of the graph. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I did two videos on uh, normalizing. I'll link them. Uh, I'll link them in the description. So what we're going to do is we're just going to speed up the values. We're going to change the boundaries of our dimension. So we'll, we'll speed it up by four, like that. And now we're going to shift. Let's shift down. Let's go 
minus equals 1.5. What do we get? All right, now what we're, we're going to do is we're just going to manipulate the, the function here. This has nothing to do with the... So what I'm doing right now has nothing to do with GLSL. It's just a basic like high school function manipulation. So we're going to increase the frequency or the, what would you call it, the period. We're going to increase the, uh, the period of the graph. Basically, all we're doing is this. Let's say for effect, we'll do 20. See how many, how many uh, oscillations you can get when you just magnify or you scale it upwards. That's what we're going to do right now. So we just can see more. So let's do, let's do five, see what we get. There we go. So now we're replicating the, uh, the sine, the sine function. The first function we replicated was f of x. We call this a linear function because it's, it represents a line uh, with a constant slope, constant rise over run. The second function is what we call a sinusoidal function. We'll get into functions in the, uh, the next video. I just wanted to show you uh, how we can use or how the line was drawn by the, uh, the plot shape and why that line was uh, set up the way it was. So that's a sinusoidal function. So that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to get into step and smooth step. We use step and smooth step for a lot more than just uh, shaping lines. We use it for for a lot more complicated stuff. And so we need to know how smooth, well, step and uh, smooth step are working. Because again, we're going to be using them a lot in the uh, in the future. So give a like, uh, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, thumbs up, whichever platform you're watching this one on. I think I'm on three platforms now. Um, for the new year, I'm going to go into, I think, two more platforms. Whichever platform you're watching this on, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one.